Christmas message you may not have expected from the creator of the controversial Bodyworks exhibition. This year, it's my turn to have the privilege of making the Christmas address, which is traditionally given by Germans. Most of all, 2002 has been the year after the atrocities of September the 11th, 2001. And it has, in some ways, been a year of inertia. There has not been a war in the Gulf. Osama bin Laden has not, as was promised, been captured and preserved. Closer to home, while European unification has progressed, the United Kingdom has chosen not to adopt the euro as its currency. The euro didn't make it, but I brought imports of a different kind, mummified Europeans. For me, this year has also been about a great debate here in Britain, not as Shakespeare had it, or whether to be or not to be, but whether to see or not to see. This is a question dear to my heart. According to the Human Rights Act in this country, everyone has a right to freedom of opinion and expression, a right that includes the freedom to receive information and ideas through any media, regardless of frontiers. However, there is huge reluctance among parts of the medical elite to bow to the will of the laity in their thirst for sensation, curiosity and knowledge. But I ask myself, to what extent they have the moral high ground on these issues? Were they morally scrutinized when they applied to study medicine? A free society must have access to knowledge about the human body, and it is the job of the keepers of this knowledge to tame sensationalism by transforming it into deep and real interest in the human body, but not to censor it. And this was my guide as I came to Britain at the beginning of the year. It's a dreadful freak show, it's hype. It's just a display of grotesquerie. It's pretty weird, because you're like looking at them and you think they're models, but then you realise they're people. Does it's... it make you think differently about yourself? Yeah. I've always wanted to be cut in half, so I think that would be brilliant. Well, I think as we can see from the kind of circus around us, this is not really a primarily educational event, but entertainment. I didn't mean to cause a fuss, but as a former East German citizen jailed for two years as a political prisoner, I know what it means to talk about democracy. To my mind, democracy is at its best when the people make a mockery of the predictions of the experts. The unforeseen reunification of Germany, the overwhelming public reaction to the death of Princess Diana, even the queues outside this exhibition forecast to be a failure. In fact, it has opened the hearts of 700,000 people in Britain alone and 10 million worldwide to the beauty beneath our skin. But what has impressed me most during my time here has been the reaction of the authorities, not that they wanted me to shut up shop. I don't blame them for trying, but for allowing me to do everything I've done. In the end, they paid close enough attention to their own laws, to realize it would have been illegal to stop me. That surely is democracy in action. Are you real or some strange angel? 
Britain has an unhappy anatomical past with dissection as an ultimate death penalty rather than a route to knowledge. The prospect of coming here was a challenge. No international traveling anatomical exhibition had made it before. They all shied away because of the Anatomy Act, which was very good at ensuring no murders were committed in the name of anatomy, but failed in its democratization. Consequently, I found myself coming to an anatomical desert. I was advised to choose a posh location for the exhibition, but I disagreed. Historically, the Pope, leader of the most anatomy-friendly religion on earth, allowed public autopsy in marketplaces. One Pope even donated his own body. For this reason, Body Worlds always comes to the people, to a marketplace in Cologne, to a slaughterhouse in Brussels, to a brewery in East London. As to the law in Britain, fortunately, my secret friends, the writers of the Anatomy Act, were very specific. They defined the scope of the Act to apply only to teaching by dissection, excluding my Euro mummies. We all come face to face with death. It belongs to the people. But modern scientific community has stolen it and hidden it in hospital. What's more, we have forgotten that we are fragile natural beings in a technical world. More than ever, we need reminding of our own mortality to judge for ourselves what our body is, where we are coming from, where we are going to. To grasp life, we must embrace death. That is why I decided it was high time to revive the old tradition of public autopsy. It was a battle to do it, and it nearly landed me back in jail. But it was a battle worth fighting. This is the body of a 72-year-old man who died of heart failure. What caused his heart to fail is a mystery. Tonight, his family, who've authorised an autopsy, want to know more about why he died. Post-mortem examinations are common, but what makes this one unusual and highly controversial is that in life, the dead man consented to his body being used to educate lay people, that the autopsy is to be conducted in front of television cameras and before a live paying audience who've been queuing around the block here in Brick Lane in East London. Now, is this illegal? Well, yesterday, Her Majesty's Inspector of Anatomy said he thinks it is because it breaches the Anatomy Act. Professor Gunther von Hagens disagrees. He says what's going on here tonight is a perfectly legal post-mortem and not an event covered by the Act. Our right to see does not come cheap and democracy is never a gift. It must be constantly be fought for. Our appreciation for one another should not depend on standard of education, but on our passion for what we do. In Japan, I found that it didn't matter whether you were a street cleaner or a lawyer. The esteem in which you were held depended only on the extent to which your heart was in your work. Christmas is a time of reflection and a time for belief. I'm not religious, but my belief is in the democratization of knowledge. Therefore, my hopes and, if you like, prayers are for the sharing of experience and information. And now I show you how to dissect a turkey professionally. Du Grunsnik so sunny sight, nine out in winter, Venice night, oh Tannenbaum, oh Tannenbaum, Vitor Zendal.